Hi, everyone. Uh, so um, one thing you should know, this story is about uh, how I sold my soul for luxury and how luxury uh, got me into other uh, problems. So the story begins in uh, 2006. Uh, it was the time when uh, the 1% meant uh, your best option between skim milk and 2%, um, and not a reviled social class. Uh, it was a time when things were good. Uh, I was looking for a job then uh, in, the, uh, in the corporate world, and uh, you know people could afford their third homes and uh, horseback riding lessons for their uh, maids' kids. And uh, I remember like going in university, and it was very, like university students were easily exploited. I mean, I went to U of T, and I remember like my friends were signing up for credit cards for like extra large T-shirts of U of T, and like beer cozies and things like that. And for me, like the way you got me was like if it just a meal, if it wasn't craft dinner or a five dollar foot long, like that from Subway. Uh, but <laughs> forgot to put that before. Uh, totally different interpretation. <laughs> totally different interpretation. Uh, but um, so for me, um, when I was being recruited, uh, they took me to all these really fancy places, um, uh, Canoe and all these other places on Bay Street. Uh, uh, and I remember telling my dad about this because, you know, we didn't come from a very wealthy background and he didn't really... Uh, uh, grow up that way either, and I was being, you know, totally spoiled. Uh, and so this was a chance for him to be kind of live vicariously through me. Uh, and one thing that kind of stuck with him is one time when I was taking out for lunch to buy Mark, and they have this like forty dollar burger there, and that just like blew his mind because like, for like forty dollars for a burger just made no sense to him. And so he would tell all of his friends, "My son had a forty dollar burger," and <laughs> and uh, like it was just like his point of pride. Like you know, I did. I did a few other things, but that was his like crown, my crowning achievement in my life. Um, and so, um, but my dad, you know, it was understandable. Like he came from simpler beginnings as well. Uh, he was a teacher, so for him, lunch usually meant uh, it came out of a thermos or a Lunchables uh, vacuum pack. Uh, and so for him, um, and when we'd have family dinners, we, we went to Chinatown. Uh, and so, you know, when, it's, when they said that they were setting up your table, it didn't mean they were like rearranging the table to accommodate your size. It meant they were wrapping up your whole meal in a plastic kind of, looks like a Godzilla's diaper or something, just like whisking away the prior meal in this plastic tablecloth. And so, um, you know, it came up to a Father's Day a few years when I started working that I said like to my brother, why don't we take him out for dinner, you know, or for lunch uh, at Bymark, because he always talked about this burger. And so, because um, you can only get so many uh, big mouth Billy Basses for Father's Day. Um, <laughs> and so uh, we t finally took him there. And we could tell he took it seriously, because uh, my dad, very casual guy, um, we can tell he took it seriously because he matched his belt to his snakeskin boots. So he was very, <laughs> he knew this was like a good joint. Uh, <laughs> So when we finally got there, I could, I could tell he was totally out of his element. He was totally out of his element. He goes there, and, and, and I don't know if you've been to a biomarket. It looks like a, a bomb shelter if an interior decorator owned it. Like, it's very, like, like you know, a lot of, like, uh, branches with no leaves on them and, like, very, like, like stu uh, impractical vases and things like that. Um, <laughs> And uh, more, you know, black Amexes around there than Kanye West can name drop in three albums. Like, it was stupid. It was just not his scene at all. And so I could tell he was uncomfortable. And as soon as we sat down, you know, people are on you, like, asking, what would you like to drink? And, like, you know, people, like, I, I remember seeing when the Chilean miners got out of the, the shaft and they had been drinking their own urine for weeks. They, they weren't approached that quickly for drinks. He, we didn't even have time. And when my dad, you know, we were ordering, you know, all these other things. I was in Manhattan, my brother's ordering wine, and my dad's like, I'll have a Coors Light. And they're like, we don't have Coors Light. And, and so he's like, I'll have a Diet Coke then. And so um, it, you could tell, I was just like, oh, this is going so badly. And then, you know, they, they place the, you know, when you go to a restaurant, they give you a wine list and a, a, the regular menu. Um, and so he opens, you know, he doesn't, he doesn't know why there's two menus. So he opens the first menu, and uh, it, it is the uh, ordering menu. Um, and he goes, I'll have the, oh, the, 
the chick the poultry and fish looks good and I'm like dad that's the table of contents <laughs> and so and so I'm like page it's not two dollars it means page two is poultry and fish um, and so I was like dad we know what we're getting you we're getting you the burger okay uh, you've been talking about it all of my university career that's what we're gonna get you and so um, we finally uh, put in the order um, and when it arrives, uh, I can tell he's disappointed. I mean, it's a $40 burger, and, and I could, I think he, I don't know what he was expecting. I think he was expecting like a gold-plated bun made of like bits of panda and like <laughs> sprinkled with like little chunks of the Hope Diamond and like all this other stuff. Because like when he looked at it, he was kind of like, uh, there's these like onion rings beside it and it looks like, uh, like giant onion rings of, King Kong was in a 90s boy band and it was just like this like w weird setup for him and um, so he started you know I I'm sure we've all watched a lot of episodes of CSI and you know you, I, you've seen some pretty nasty dissections and my dad just pulled this thing apart he was disgusted by it <laughs> he was disgusted he took off the bun he looks underneath it he's it's got brie on it and melted brie looks like somewhere in between uh uh, it looks like someone's runny nose is just like been placed on the b the, the the beef patty, and then uh, there was like uh, I think there was truffle oil on it, and he didn't recognize the smell because uh, they don't sell truffle oil at Costco, so uh, he didn't know uh, what it, what that smell is like. Oh, there's I think it's off. I think the meat's a little off. I'm like, no, it's that's that's truffle oil. It's fine. Um, and so as he's eating it, like I can tell, he's not really enjoying it. And then uh, the, the waiter kind of, they, they hover. They're kind of like vultures. They, they come behind you going, uh, how is your meal, sir? And I can tell, like, for a split second in his mind, he was ready to turn and go, mind your own fucking business. <laughs> but he didn't. He didn't. He knew not to. But he was kind of, like, I guess startled, like, what does it matter to you? Uh, <laughs> my dad's not a New York, New York or anything like that. But, um, but I could tell, like, it was just like a very... Uh, uncomfortable experience for him. Um, and so, you know, finally, you know, by the end of it, uh, he, ate, he ate part of it. And, you know, my brother and I, we enjoyed our meal. Um, and uh, I remember paying for the bill. And uh, uh, my dad, you know, he said, thank you. Um, and, and he looked pretty disappointed in the end. And for me, that, that was pretty disheartening because finally I was working, like I'd finally take my dad out for dinner. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, cheap by any means. Um, and so for me, it was, it was, I was proud because finally I could, I could take him out for dinner. And uh, I said, uh, so what did you think of the, of the oh, sorry, of the lunch? And uh, he's like, oh, it, was, yeah, it was good, it was good. And I was like, I, I don't think you think it was good. And, uh, and he's like, no, no, it was good. It was good. And, and I was like, you know what? I got more appreciation out of the server when I left the tip than uh, from you right now. And so on the drive home, because um, he was going to drop us off or to uh, my office, um, I said to him, you can be honest with me, you know? Uh, I know it's like doesn't work for everyone. Not everyone likes this stuff. Uh, did you really, you know, enjoy the meal? And he's like you know what, I would have had, rather had $40 worth of Big Macs. <laughs> and I was like, are you kidding me? And so I think what I've learned from this is that, you know, happiness for him, I think, was really, the luxury that he had here was not in that he got to try a $40 burger. It's, he's, got, he's got time to spend with his sons that he didn't always get to see. And that real happiness isn't measured, you know, in price tags or, you know, what the toppings are in your thing. It's actually a function of how many, uh, you know, Big Macs you can get converted to that happiness. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>